Hey, good morning. Welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Well, today's project, we're back on some land of claim tables. Uh, when I first started this project, I didn't think that much of it, and I didn't bring you along. I've already got the tops all refinished, and I was pretty much thinking that the job was done until I put the two-tiered end tables down on the floor and noticed they both have a case of the wiggles. Now, before I ever start a refinishing project, I go through and do an assessment of the piece to make sure that I don't miss out on any, on any repairs. And I know I flip these tables over and check the legs up and down, but probably because it's got this shelf brace on it, I didn't go side to side. And if you put these tables down on the ground now and put a little weight on them, they'll go back and forth, and that is no good. So, what we're going to have to do is get this blown apart and get these legs reattached, put everything back together, and preserve the best we can all the finish that I did on these. And I'll show you here in just a second. So I've got this sitting on a brand new, nice, clean uh, moving blanket. We'll be careful with the tops, and hey, if we scratch them or do something, we can just shoot another coat of lacquer over them. They've, right now, they've got uh, two coats of sealer and three coats of lacquer on them, plus some color inside. But let me uh, let me show you the set, and let's uh, show you what we're going we're to be dealing with. The first piece in this set is this uh, cocktail table. It's also sold as a bench. Uh, I think it was listed by... Uh, by Lena Claim as a, as a cocktail table slash bench. It's uh, six feet long and it, it doesn't even fit in my truck. I've never really um, handled one of these double length cocktail tables but you can see that that's been uh, refinished and that's ready for sale. And here's the other two-tiered side table with the top refinished and you can see that's no good. So Let's take a look at the piece that we have upside down. All right, as you can see, we have the legs going into the top, and then the shelf is attached with four screws, and then between each leg, is this stretcher assembly, and it goes into the top with two additional joints. So to get these legs completely out, we have to overcome the joints at the base of each leg and the joints here or possibly here depending on how much play we can get once this shelf is off. The shelf comes off with four screws as I've said and I've got the piece all marked. You know each leg is is one and then each piece that attaches to it is one and then I've got the table marked as table A. So I'm going to start to take this table apart and see how we do before we start working on the other one. So let's go. And fortunately, no big troubles getting this shelf unit off. I'll show you the screws that we're dealing with. They sit in this recess. I'll pull them out with my magnet here, but that's all there is to them. And what I'll do is just tape each screw right by the hole so it stays right where it belongs and I don't lose them. And then we'll get on to the legs. I hope you can see how much wiggle we have in this leg. And about the same on the other side. And I really think they're going to have to come out to make this repair correct. Okay, we're set up to start using the heat gun to try to loosen these joints up. The idea is to warm the joint up enough to loosen up the glue without bubbling the finish off the legs. Um, this takes time and patience. I'll show you a little bit of it, but then I'll bring you back when the leg comes off. And I've had some questions on the, what heat gun I use. This is a DeWalt. It's a D26960 heat gun. It's been a good one for me. It came in a kit with a bunch of uh, different nozzles. I've got a wider tip on this one because I don't want to, uh, to bubble that finish off the leg. Like I said, I got out of order on this one, and now I've got to be careful about uh, what kind of damage I do to the existing thing. We've been about 20 minutes and this leg's about ready to come out. But you can see what happened when they put the leg in there. The glue got onto and under this veneer and that was holding that up. And if I'd have continued to pull, I'd have ripped this sheet of veneer off. So I took a knife and cut around it to free this leg up a little bit more. You know, this is a very difficult job. 
to get these legs out of here. And I'll be frank with you, I'm not certain I'm going to be able to get these out. In the past, these have been very, very stubborn. I may have to get these two main legs out as far as I can, uh, coat what I can with epoxy, inject what I can with epoxy, and put them back together before I run the risk of breaking something. But I'll keep at it and let you know how I do. Okay, I've got the one leg pulled out this far. It's, it's pretty loose, but I don't want to run the risk of yanking it because these pieces here are just tighter in heck. As we've talked about in the past, whenever you try to disassemble furniture, you run the risk of damaging it. This Lane Acclaim table is from 1964, and it's, the top is, is uh, fiberboard with veneer over it. And as I had said before, the glue from this joint had gotten under the veneer. And, you know, look what we've done here. I'm not going to go any farther with this leg. I'm not going to run the risk of doing any more damage. Well, I started to work on those other legs, and they're in there tight. And I'm not going to cause any more damage to this table than I already have. So what I've decided to do, I'm going to epoxy that leg in. I'm going to epoxy this leg in. These two legs that I cannot get elevated, I've drilled some holes around the perimeter for them, and I'm going to inject these with that chair leg glue, reassemble this thing, get it flat on the floor, and let this glue harden and see what, what, what happens. That should take care of it. You know, ideally, the best repair is to get these legs out of there, clean out the holes, re-glue everything. Can't do it on this table. I'm going to blow it apart. I mean, look at, look at what we're dealing with here. So that's what I've decided to do. So I'll set you up and you can watch me do it. Now let me show you what we did. We drilled four holes into each of these leg joint assemblies and tried to run the bit down along the tenon so that we could fill this joint the best we could with uh, the expanding chair glue, the uh, Brewax Chair RX that we've used in the past. And that's been done. This piece has been lifted up as high as we could dare, would dare and then epoxied and then put back down on the rubber mallet. And the same for this one, and this is the damage that we're going to have to deal with once these legs set up. So the next step was to reinstall the shelf, which I did, and now I need to get this on a perfectly flat surface and make sure that this sets up straight. So that's my next step. If you have a large cast iron surface, that's a great place to put a piece to determine if it's flat. Uh, my table saw, unfortunately, is only cast iron in, in the middle and aluminum on the other side. So what I've done is put my uh, cross-cut sled on here. I've got the table sitting on here. It doesn't rock anymore. It's nice and sturdy. just going to leave it to set up. Uh, I'm a little hesitant to put weight on the top of it only because, like I said this morning, I screwed up and I refinished that top yesterday. And I don't want to run the risk of marring the top. I think we've got it where it needs to be. I pounded those joints closed and uh, we're just going to let that set up. I've got to do the other one but all I'm going to do on that one, I'll be honest with you, is drill some holes around those legs and squirt some chair glue in there because I'm not going to have this kind of disaster on the other one. So let me get to it and then uh, I'll show you the final result and we'll have a little talk about what happens. Well hey, we got those legs glued back in. I used West System Epoxy uh, where I used epoxy on the two big damaged legs and then on the other legs that were just loose and were still relatively tight in the joint I just used that 
Brie, Brie Chair RX, which is uh, a spindle glue that's used for repairing chairs, and it uh, allegedly gets into the wood, swells the wood, and tightens the joint up as well as glue it together. Uh, it's the only option that I really felt I had because, you know, the, uh, the main tenet of bioethics, right, is first do no harm. Well, that's how I feel with this stuff. The last thing I want to do is, is damage a piece of furniture to make a small repair and, and do major damage to it in the process. So what you saw me do is how I chose to uh, handle the situation. I mean, I screwed up. I screwed up from the beginning by refinishing the top without noticing there was that damage. Fortunately, I was able to uh, get those repairs taken care of with the tops refinished. But I didn't weight the tops down like I normally do because I didn't want it to uh, affect the lacquer finish. Although it's going to get one more coat after I buff this out. But still, it's, it was an issue that I had to deal with. And secondly, trying to get those legs out. You know, we've seen with Elena Claim in the past that that's chipboard base. And the glue that they used back in the 60s, it's often, you see it, it's pink you know, soaks into that chipboard and getting it to separate away from the tenon of the leg is not an easy thing. You know, we've pulled those legs out before. You've seen me do them in other Acclaim videos. Today wasn't a good day and, and we had more damage than, than I ever want to see. And as soon as the epoxy sets up, I'll be able to use some epoxy putty and smooth that out and sand that up and color it. It'll be fine. But still, it's just, uh, it bothers me that, uh, that there was that kind of damage trying to get that leg out. So I'm going to lay a challenge in front of, I got my leg. I'm going to lay a challenge in front of the Lost Mountain Nation here. We're up almost to 2,000 subscribers. And one of the things that I'm completely honored with are the number of people that are in this business or interested in this hobby that have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge that they can share with the rest of the community, myself being a recipient of that knowledge as well. We also have some professional refinishers that have been commenting, which to me is just is just wonderful. Thank you. And of course some smart asses, but we don't we don't pay any attention to them. So if you are someone who has some experience in handling these kinds of things, loose legs where you, you just can't get them out, but you got to get them tightened up. And if you have any ideas other than what I showed you, share them with the community in the in the comment section, and share them with me because I love to learn. As you know, I make kind of a big deal about when we get comments that uh, I consider to be valuable to me or the rest of the community, and I celebrate them. We'll certainly celebrate certainly celebrate these when they come in. So, uh, despite the uh, a little bit of doom and gloom here. This project's come out great. I've just got to touch up the legs. You've seen me do that. I flip the tables over. I paint the tips with Canyon black paint. I'm sure you can use any other kind of black paint. That just happens to be what I bought, and it looks like a pretty good match. And um, touch up a little bit here and there and wax the bottom shelves of the uh, pieces. Rub out the finish one more time. Shoot a fun coat of lacquer on it, and they're done. So anyways... From our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Best regards. Thanks for watching. Take good care. And remember, it's just wood, color, some shiny stuff, and occasionally an unexpected surprise like today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next video. Bye.